All right, today we're going to talk about wine. Wine can be very snobby, can get very highbrow, it doesn't have to. Specifically, we're going to talk about aerating wine. So here we have a bottle of wine, and here we have a decanter. Uh, now, the Romans pioneered glass use of decanters, and there were a few purposes. The first was, you would take, let's say, an old bottle or an unfiltered bottle of wine, pour it right in here, and that would ideally leave the sediment in this bottle so then you could get clean wine from this. The other reason people now still use decanters is to expose the wine to air, to let it breathe, and they use a lot of other fancy terms, but many people find that it softens the tannins. That's that, so that mouth feel that sometimes gives you a overbrewed tea type of taste or effect, sensation. And some people find it softens it. So with a Bordeaux, for example, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, some of these big wines with lots of tannins and sometimes sulfites, this is what people will do. The objective, of course, is to expose it to more air. So the surface area is increased. Turns out there are a few different ways to do this. If you decant wine like this, you might want to leave it out for an hour, two hours, three hours. Well, there are a few other options that we have. The first is this Venturi device, and this capitalizes on Bernoulli's principle. That just means that as you increase, in effect, the velocity of liquid, the movement of the liquid, you decrease the pressure and you're able to actually infuse more air. And this is what it looks like. So you would actually do it right over a glass, and uh, being careful not to pour it everywhere, you can hear it being siphoned through and increasing the flow. So this is a faster way, it's a cheat, versus the larger decanter. You can do this over each glass. So I'll just take a sniff, and you can get fancy. This is also one of the methods, obviously, by swirling that you can also achieve aerating, but on a very minimal level, an excuse to have wine. Quite nice, but if we want to take this to its logical extreme, we can do what Nathan Mervold recommends. And now Nathan, was the former CTO, or is the former CTO of Microsoft, and uh, he's a bit obsessive with food. A uh, master French chef himself, he has taken a slightly more extreme approach. So here we have, and I love these, this is a Bomex beaker, and it can be used for many, many different purposes. We're gonna pour a bunch of wine in here. I would suggest starting off with about that much. And we are going to expose it to as much air as possible using an immersion blender, this is also known as a stick blender. This is a Cuisinart smart stick. Do not stick your fingers into it. But we will see that you stick it in not all the way. You're not gonna to touch the bottom entirely. And you will do this for 20 to 30 seconds. Now you can see it's quite frothy here. More like a Guinness than a typical glass of wine. You can even hear it. And I like to use the Bomex to drink out of. This is actually 250 milliliters, which is exactly one third a standard bottle of wine. So we can transfer this over. Markedly different. So there you have it. That is three hours of decanting achieved in 20 seconds with an immersion blender. Thank you, Mr. Merville.